Christ has checkmated the world. He really has. And in a way that I didn't even see coming until now. Much of today's national security, security apparatuses and all that, has to do with protecting information and protecting information from volatile people, from dangerous persons, etc. It's not so much to control people because the authorities in the West are there to make uh, to promote a free society but you've got to understand that with all the information that's available today it just takes one loose person it takes one nutter to abuse all that information and create something very dangerous something that can harm a lot of people and all that sort of stuff so to protect all the freedoms to protect people it's right that uh not information is kept from persons or people are, are, are prevented from being educated, but that there are mechanisms or processes in place that ensure that those, those, those sorts of information aren't abused or people who could have that, those, have that sort of knowledge is in a manageable position in society uh, or something like that but I don't want to go into the nitty gritty details but the fact of the matter is <laughs> there's a lot of sensitive information out there that people could really really use I for instance and I've been like this for nearly 15 years if not longer 20 years I've always had enough knowledge to ha I could but the knowledge I have I could and I'm not fucking kidding you right now. I'll just give you a rundown. I'm not, not going to give you the explanation. God forbid. But I could actually, with everything I've got in the house now, and which isn't much, I could get my pack, get some essential tools, get some clothes, go full uh, rogue, and exact no less than $5 billion worth of damage in a week. And I'd get away with every single bit of it. I can do that. I can actually walk out the door right now. I have the knowledge of exactly how to do it, how to get away with it, and how to come back and laugh about it. Do I want to go outside and cause $5 billion worth of damage in one week? No. And there aren't many Australians, if any Westerners, who have that sort of knowledge who can pull that off. Um, I, I don't even want to cause $10 worth of damage. And the reason I say that Christ has checkmated us is because you're just so lucky. You're just very, very blessed that a person like me has a Christian DNA, has Christian DNA, has a psyche that's, no matter how much of a cunt I can be, which I fully acknowledge, <laughs> no matter what kind of fucking monster or cunt, or absolute mongrel I am sometimes, my psyche is Christian, my heart is Christian, my DNA is Christian. Um, and that is the ultimate restrictor chip, restrictor DNA, like you got on the uh, restrictor... Uh, like you got in some speedom not speedometers, uh, some cars that won't let you go past a certain speed. It kicks back. Uh, rev limiter. Uh, many cars have rev limiters, and uh, you could say that Christianity is my rev limiter, and it's. But it's the perfect rev limiter. It's not a rev limiter that limits the possibilities of humanity. It's a rev limiter that prevents a person from using their infinite capacity in a very malicious way and that's the beauty of christianity now what i'm saying why i'm saying christ has checkmated the world is because i've looked at every philosophy there is not just religious so i've looked at many religions i've looked at many philosophies many uh schools of thought many political schools of thought everything yeah i have a very broad knowledge and i can tell you now that christianity is the only one that stands where fundamentally the message Anybody who adheres to it, highly unlikely to abuse knowledge to such extent they damage the world or damage uh, humanity or anything like that. Now, you could argue, what about the Middle Ages, blah, 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 but that's completely contorted. They were norms that were established for thousands of years, and you'll notice that the standards of the Middle Ages were so much more less cruel than the standards of Roman times, which was so much more less cruel than the standards of uh, the caveman ages and so forth. It's just that was the norm of the age. And even then, uh, 
rulers, the church, they didn't, ex it's completely blown out of proportion. They didn't exactly seek to uh, cause mass murder or you know, do all these bad things that you could imagine. That's all just crap, political crap. Um, the fact of the matter is that the Christian mentality, the Christian, Christian thought, pure Jesus thought, pure Jesus thinking, the Gospels, that is the purest way that will stop humans from using the knowledge they will soon have, uh, which will be unimaginable. Uh, it's already unimaginable, uh, sort of. I can imagine it, but not many people can see it for what it is. Uh, it's only Christianity that can uh, prevent people from immersing themselves in all that knowledge, or that knowledge going to the wrong person, wrong people, and it being abused. So in other words, knowledge is unstoppable. The AI, not, not so much AI, we, we can keep tabs on that and a lot of our technology, if not all of it, but the rate at which information and uh, innovation and all that is accelerating is mind-boggling and it's only going to get more intense until all of humanity is at this really great point where we've got this fullness, this great, this much greater bank than we already have of knowledge especially with all the data that we have not yet made sense of, which is, there's like, you've got X amount of data, 99% of it, <clears throat> believe it or not, has not been made sense of, and that's a lot of data. Um, and essentially I'm saying that Christ, pure genius, teaching us how to be enlightened, teaching us how to prevent ourselves from destroying ourselves and it's all in there now i for instance i think of when he says to light a candle on a roof on a mountaintop you don't hide it now why would you want to why would someone say that you know what kind of people want to hide a candle people want to steal thunder people who who, have, who want to uh, have more knowledge than other people so they can clearly take advantage so what christ was saying is that whatever you know whatever knowledge you have share it share it amongst the world let all people know what you know don't hide things don't get up to mischief be one for humanity and that's all over that's all over the gospel when you take it as it uh, entirely and you don't just cherry pick um, christ was not one for people to to steal other person, to steal other people's thunder, or to steal, or to hog what one knows. Knowledge is there to be shared. Knowledge is there for all humans. Only sadistic clowns and people who shouldn't exist want more knowledge than other persons. That's, to me, that's the epitome of unhumane, inhumane, people who don't deserve to live. Obviously, there's a, there's a, there is such thing as trade secrets and business uh, processes and blah, 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 but that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, all, all human knowledge should be out there for all humans to have. And the only thing that truly protects it is having a type of Christian attitude of good intentions. Because guess what happens if our knowledge keeps in going and going and going and someone with very, very bad intentions has a fullness of has that fullness of knowledge something similar to what I could do what I explained before well, they could do really bad stuff we've already seen people invent the nuclear bomb um, so Christ is the ultimate that he's checkmated the world I, I, I kid you not the only thing that can save all humans from the future is Christian thought I, I'm not saying that to uh, degrade other religions or degrade other people but Christian thought of purely good intentions, of, of being a light for other people, being uh, benign, you know, being as wise as the snake and as vicious as the snake when you need to, but in essence, and in your as a character, as innocent as a dove, you know, being the sheepdog, you know, being the one who looks out for the sheep, not the wolf. That's that's a Christian. Um, I just tend to be a the fucking, 
not a sheep dog. I, I, I count myself as the sheep dog, but I'm more like a fucking sheep polar bear or something, something vicious, a sheep crocodile. The rarity, the, the fucking cunt that just snaps at anything that moves that tries to mess with the sheep. Uh, and you get people like that. So I'm the, I'm, I'm the sheep crocodile that doesn't just protect the sheep, but actually goes hunting for the wolves and wants to snack on their bones and eat their marrow and vicious them. Yeah, there are Christians like that, but for the greater good. So that, you know, for instance, there are people out there who don't abuse the swaths of human information we have so they can completely fuck the world and fuck everybody with it. So, to some, so I don't keep rambling on, because this is quite intense. All this has just come to me. And I, I thought of it at once and thought to myself, holy shit. Christ is a, a trillion times smarter than I already realized how smart he was. I mean, he's checkmated the earth. The only, in 10 years from now, there's going to be that much information at people's hand. It would just take a few hours if you knew what I knew to concoct something really, really bad if you wanted to. And the only thing that can truly stop that is a genuine Western Christian education. Why would you not want that in schools? Why would you speak against the Catholic Church in, the, in terms of the fine children they raise? Everyone commits a crime. It doesn't take it does, that doesn't negate that which is true and uh, noble. It just means the person trying to practice what's good and noble has made a mistake and is a fuckhead. Yeah, why would you want to remove a, a classical Christian education, the only thing that's good in this world? from our schools. Why would you want that Christian essence, that DNA to be removed from kids? It, does Christianity prevent people from being their best selves? I will urge that it's the complete opposite and you're a complete fucking lunatic if you think that modern science and everything with it was a product of anything other than Christianity. I mean, you only have to look at Mendel, for instance. You only have to look at the, a lot of the great invent, uh, a lot of the great scientific pioneers some of them knights. Uh, all of this enlightened thinking came from Christian thinkers. Um, <laughs> so, being at one end of the spectrum, Christianity is all about knowledge. It's about getting more and more and more and more and more knowledge. It's inevitable. And it's good that it's with good people. That's also a message of Christianity. Uh, power, which is what knowledge is, should be with very good people. And... It, uh, what else is going to protect all the human race from what it can do to itself? What else is going to protect it other than the purity of thought that is actually in the Gospels? When you read it from an apolitical perspective and you read it and you read it sincerely from the heart, there's nothing. It's the ultimate protection against knowledge being abused. And Christ has checkmated the world because if we're going, to, in other words, I'm going to put it blunt. I'm, you can call it a prophecy or something like that, but humanity will not survive if it does not subscribe to the Gospels, to its thinking. I'm not saying that you must go out now and convert yourself. I'm not saying you must be baptized tomorrow or anything like that. Heck, you can stay whatever religion or non-religion you are, but if you're going to be a good... If, you, if the human race is going to survive... You're going to have to subscribe to that thought invariably, that way of thinking. It's magic. So what Christ has done, how he's checkmated the world from demolishing the Roman Empire <laughs> with nothing more than a battle donkey to checkmating the world with this fact that his, the very think, his very thinking is what will save humans from destroying themselves because of how we look at knowledge and want to practice, implement it. Now that's, that's magic. Christ is magic. Christ is, really is the beginning and the end. He really is everything. Uh, the Alpha and Omega. It's unbelievable. Uh, there's a lot of things I could talk about in terms of how I know Christ is exactly who he said he was. With and without my Christian hat on. But he really has checkmated the world. I mean, the world is, the world for the last 30 years has been on the trajectory of self complete self-destruction, annihilation. And the essence of Christian thinking that is found in the Gospels when it's practiced for exactly what it is and not from a political standpoint, it's 
you, you can't want to you could have all the knowledge in the world and the ability to do great harm but you won't do it because it's in your essence it's in your dna it's in your heart to want to do good you get me see there are people out there who you can't trust with a butter knife and then you've got people out there who you can trust with a nuclear bomb and they're the people we want they're the christian thinkers people who think with good intentions and that's the, that, that is the message of the Bible. The, the true message of the New Testament is this is nothing but good intentions. And that's what you need in this ever-troubling world. So Christ, again, Christ is unbelievable. He has checkmated the world because if the world is going to survive, invariably, they have to think like him. They have to do what the gospel says. It's unbelievable. And you'll understand when you start to think about it discover the gospels if you really haven't it's amazing